So then this is looking pretty good. We have our user class and we can create these new instances of users down here. And they have all these different methods and we can also do method chaining now. So all of this is looking pretty good. However, I now want to introduce the concept of inheritance. Say for example, on this website, we have users, right? We could have as many users as you want, 100, 200, etc., And they all have these different methods and these different properties. Now, also on the website, I'd like to create some special kind of users, which are admins, right? And these admins will have some different methods associated with them. Now, at the end of the day, these admins are still users. They're still going to have all the same properties like email, name, score, and all the same functions like login, logout, and update score. However, they're also going to have extra methods like the ability to delete a user. Now, I don't want to attach a delete user method to this thing right here because I don't want any user to be able to delete a user, just admins. So what we need to do really is create a new admin class with that method inside it. But the problem is we also want all of this stuff inside the admin class as well because we want all of this same functionality. So what we could do is create that class and we could copy and paste all of that into that admin class and then also add on the extra delete user method or whatever other methods an admin might have as well. However, that's not the best way to do it. Instead, what we could do is use class inheritance. So what we'd like to say is, okay, yeah, we will create an extra admin class. So let's create that. First of all, we'll say class admin like so. And this admin class is actually going to inherit from the user class, because at the end of the day, an admin is a user. It's just a specific type of user with some extra bits and bobs inside it. So we want to inherit all of this stuff from the user class, but then just add some extras, right? Now we can do that very easily using this kind of class syntax. And the way we do it is by saying, okay, yeah, class admin then extends, and this is gonna extend this class from another one, which is user, okay? So now whenever we create a new admin, what it's going to do is still give it all of this stuff right here. It's going to run this constructor to give it all of these different properties and associate all of these different methods with an admin when we create one. So that's good. We're creating this admin with all the same functionality and properties as a user now. That was easy. But now what we can do is pass in some extra functionality into this admin class, which the user doesn't have. So I want to create a delete user function. And by the way, like I said, we don't need the construct in here. If we don't have a constructor in the class that extends from another, then it will just use this constructor right here. Okay. Which is what we're doing. So delete user, this is going to be the method that I want to use for deleting a user. Now, first of all, what we need to do is create a new array which is going to store the users because I want to filter through this array when we are actually deleting a user. So I'm going to say var users is going to be equal to user one, which we created right here. Also user two, like so. Okay, so we have those two users in this array now. Now, what I'd like to do inside this delete user method right here is pass in the user that I want to delete. So when I call this delete user method, we're going to pass in as an argument, the user we want to delete, right? Then what we're going to say is we want to update this user's array because we're going to delete one of them out of it. We're going to filter one out of it. So we'll say users is equal to users dot filter. Now the filter method in JavaScript allows us to cycle through each element inside the array and then filter one of them or more of them out of the array. Now, each time we cycle through the array, we get access to the individual item. So what we can do here is pass in that individual item as a parameter to this ES6 arrow function. So we're taking that individual item inside this function now, and we can check if that user, this thing right here, is equal to the user that we've passed in. If it is equal, then we want to delete that user from the array. We want to filter it out. Now inside this function, if we return false for a particular user, it's going to remove that user from the array. If we return true, then it's going to keep that user inside the array. 
So what we need to do is say return, either true or false, and we're gonna say you.email, which is the email property of whichever user we're cycling through at the time, okay? And if that is not equal to user.email, then this is gonna be true, right? So we're cycling through the array. If the email of this one is not equal to the email right here, then this is gonna be true, and we're gonna keep that user in the array. If the email of this one is equal to the email of this thing right here, this is now gonna be false, therefore we're returning false, we're gonna filter that out of the array now, okay? So then, now we have that filter method, the next thing that we need to do is actually create an admin. We don't have an admin yet. So let's do that. We'll say var, I'm just gonna call this admin, you can call it what you want, and this time we say not new user, but new admin, all right? So now we're creating this new admin class. We still need to pass in an email and a name because we're still calling this constructor function, right? Because we're saying that admin extends from user. So we're still expecting all of this stuff right here. So let's pass that in. So the name is gonna be Sean at ninjas.com. And then, oh, that's the email rather. The name is gonna be Sean. Okay then, so we have this admin now. So now let's say, okay, admin dot delete user and the user is going to be user two. All right. So I'm going to try and delete that now from this array. So what I'm going to do down here is, in fact, we'll need to call this after this array has been defined. And then underneath that, I'm going to console dot log users just to see if it has in fact worked. So let's save this now and run it. And now we can see that users just has one user inside of it. So we've removed user two. Now what I want to do also is add in admin right here because at the end of the day, this admin is still a user, right? This time we'll delete user one. So we're deleting Ryu this time. So let's save that, see if this works. Okay, so now we still just have two. So we've deleted one of the users one of them still remains and the admin, and you can see Yoshi remains and Sean at ninjas.com remains as well. So we have now deleted user one, which is Ryu right here. So cool. So what we've done here is create a new class called admin, which is inherited from the user class. It's inherited all of this stuff right here. And I can demonstrate that because I could say admin.login, like so, and that's still gonna work, right? If we say admin, then we're still gonna see down here that inside the proto, we have delete user because we have that on the admin class. But if we go into proto again, and I will explain what these proto things are later on in the course, then we can see we've inherited these two functions or rather these three functions as well, which is on the user class, all right? So that's how we inherit things in separate classes. Now, obviously, if we try to do something like this, I'm gonna comment out this if we try to say user one dot delete user and pass in user two, then this shouldn't work because we're not giving ordinary users this delete user method. They shouldn't have access to that. That's only for admins right here. So let's save it and make sure that this doesn't work. And you can see user one dot delete user is not a function. So that's cool. We're just extending the user and giving admins only this extra method right here.